So Brian, X Men Apocalypse. Um, did you did you treat this as the end of a trilogy? Is it is that how you approach this movie? Actually, more than that, I viewed it as the end of six films: uh, X Men One, Two, and Three, and also uh, First Class and Days of Future Past. Um, and there are references to the older films in it. Uh, you know, I started with the first movie, but in the first movie. You know, all the X-Men were established. They were who they were ultimately going to become. So it was very exciting for me to conclude some stories, bring certain characters around, but also introduce those characters when they were, A, younger, much younger, and B, um, completely different than they would ultimately become. When I say much younger, I don't mean physically younger. I just mean <laughs> mentally younger. You, know, you all are beautiful. <laughs> I, watched, I watched the first one recently, and I, I was ah. surprised. Uh, I, I mean, I loved it first time around. I loved it again, but I was surprised by how short it was. Um, it's it, like it, it, 88 minutes without the credits. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be impossible to do a film like that now, yeah, wouldn't it? We, well, there are reasons for that. We had very little... To make a movie of that size, we had very little money, and we had very little time. Our release date got moved up six months, and suddenly I was, I'd never made a film like that before, and, and not only was I in new uncharted territory, but I was rushing through uncharted territory, and I didn't want to lose the characters or lose that great relationship between Ro Rogue and Wolverine, which, I, which I'm very fond of in that first movie. You know, two characters who meet on a snowy road and end up on the torch of the Statue of Liberty saving each other's lives. I mean, how do you get there, you know, gracefully? <laughs> Uh, t two years since the last one came out as well, so was that a quick turnaround? I guess it is yeah. in terms of big movies. Yeah, and a scary one too, because you know usually I'm competing with DC and Marvel. Now I'm, you know, that did so well. I'm competing with myself, so I wanted to make sure this movie delivered. Uh, and uh, but you know when you know the universe so well, you've been in it like myself for nearly 20 years. It, you, you just you know what works, and you know what doesn't, and you and you feel you, these characters are part of your life, so you kind of. Uh, some of it's autonomic. We, we know a character that certainly works is Wolverine, and we mm -hmm. see him. We saw him in the trailer. Was that was that a decision that you made to include him in that, so that we knew he'd be in the movie, or did you want to hold that back at all? Um, no, I, I actually wanted to, but I, but I made an agreement with Hugh that we would hold all of that stuff back, and then reached out to Hugh, and Hugh said, "Fine, it's cool," and uh, and they cut it in a really nice way too. You know, we had a little help, you know, and it's nice because it doesn't promise that he's going to be. A central character in the film, but it does promise he'll be in the film. And what's really nice about his cameo is that he's the Wolverine that you've never seen before. He's truly Weapon X, not just the guy coming out of the tank, but the weapon. And uh, we had a little issue with some of the, um, you know, which, uh, you know, but it's, it, it's, you can take the kids. <laughs> well, I was surprised actually. I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that because there were some. Scenes I mean, as long as they're. <laughs> of uh, the age. It's the archangel transformation that I thought was particularly not mm -hmm. graphic, but just felt very brutal. Um, yeah, well, I was very the the archangel transformation was very much inspired by um, uh, the film American Werewolf in London. Uh, I wanted to do my version of that. This very painful, you know, organic. Uh, eruption of change from within uh, within uh, Arch uh, Angel's body, and that was the reference I always used. Is what John Landis did with uh, that film was so masterful, so provocative, and he did it to a really cool song. And so, f thankfully, we were blessed to use uh, uh, um, f the song "The Four Horsemen" <laughs> uh, uh, to to. Uh, punctuate that transformation so I have to credit American Wear of London for that uh, are there more physical effects in that scene then than in some others in uh, no it, with the transformation stuff no that's all done in the CG world um, but the actor Ben Hardy made it come alive his performance imagining that that was happening to him on the floor he gave absolutely a full commitment and if you were to watch it without the visual effects just sound you feel the pain and the agony he's going through. I I was so impressed with his commitment and the way, you know, he left room in the frame for expansion. I mean, he understood what was happening to him in the scene as an actor. He's a very fine actor. And uh, it's just, you know, you, you could feel it, you know, in the rough cut with no wings. And then once you put that on, now it's like, ah. And uh, <laughs> my boss got grossed out by it. Uh, and you include Apocalypse in this movie, the big part of the this um, this final oh, this film. Um, what was the thinking behind bringing him in? Because he's very different to some of the characters that we've seen in the X Men universe before. The reason I brought him in was because he is so different. He's he, he's a villain that makes no distinction between human between humans and mutants, as Magneto does. 
He is an ancient mutant from a time when he wouldn't understand what he was, that he was a mutant. He would think he was a god, and others would think he was a god. And the notion is he, you know, he would, and when he came about tens of thousands of years ago, there was no civilization. Uh, men, you know, modern men were savages. And so he ca came, a, set about building civilization, but required worship. And when civilization betrayed him, the Akkadians, Babylonians, Samarians, he just wiped them away. Well, suddenly he thinks he has it right, and then he gets trapped, betrayed again, and then wakes up in a world that's interconnected as one giant false civilization, worshiping false idols and gods, and, and with the hubris of power, nuclear weapons, superpowers, and he just won't have it. Mm -hmm. And finally, I want to ask you about um, the version of the film we've seen doesn't have any post credits or anything after the, yeah, the credits. They, now, I'm assuming there are something there that, is, yeah. Are you particularly happy with those? And did you get someone or a character that you really wanted? I got a concept we really wanted, and it's a nice uh, little setup for something. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, 